We begin tonight with the war in Ukraine, where tensions continue to escalate due to a broken ceasefire deal. The deal was expected to help thousands of people evacuate. Plus, Russian President Vladimir Putin issued a warning to third parties that they will be met with military action if a no-fly zone is imposed. Jason Gaidola brings us the latest. Artillery and airstrikes continue to bombard Ukraine, including here in Irpin, outside of Kyiv, where fighter jets are seen and many are trying to evacuate the war zone over the territory. We do want NATO to step in because, as we were saying at the beginning, and the, uh, the sky is the, the weakest point of Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is again fighting like crazy on the ground. Vitaly Rosman says he fled Ukraine's capital last week and is currently at a border town volunteering for the Ukrainian government to help move supplies. He believes Western intervention is the answer at this time. However, U.S. officials are standing firm not to take action. The way to actually implement something like a no-fly zone uh, is to send NATO planes into Ukrainian airspace and to shoot down Russian planes. And that uh, could lead to a full-fledged war um, in, uh, in Europe. President Biden has been clear that we uh, are not going to get into a war with Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin fired back, saying a NATO no-fly move would be seen as NATO participating in the armed battle against Moscow. Today, the alliance's leadership gave the green light for further bombing of Ukrainian towns and villages, refusing to make a no-fly zone. However, following NATO's refusal, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky pleaded with U.S. senators for more planes. As Russian troops continue to advance from the north and east, Zelensky claims Ukraine is holding key areas in the country's interior. Heavy attacks continue 140 kilometers west of Kyiv where first responders are seen attending the rubble of a shelled school. Other cities like Charniv and Kharkiv, heavy bombing destroyed more residential areas. In occupied places like Kherson, gunshots were fired in the air as protesters pushed back on what appears to be Russian troops shown in this video. Over in Mirapol, the first attempt at a ceasefire to evacuate residents collapsed because of ongoing shelling. Both Ukrainian and Russian officials traded blame on the failed mission. And after seizing nuclear power plants in Chernobyl and Zavaritsia, Zelensky says Russian troops are now closing in on a third facility. Literally, if we talk about these nuclear uh, power plants, that's, that's a huge, huge danger to the whole Europe and, and to the whole world, pretty much, because this radiation... A Ukrainian official says there will be a third round of talks between Ukraine and Russia slated for Monday, likely regarding more negotiations on another ceasefire and safe passage corridors for people to escape. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also plans to travel to Europe next week, which include trips to Poland and Latvia, where he will meet with leaders regarding their war response.